Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLM here. In today's Q&A video, I want to talk about Fuji Wormy Artifacts. This is something that I haven't talked about, mostly because I've really not encountered it in my photography, but in my trip to Atlantic City, New Jersey this time around, when I was actually taking photos at night, I did encounter it, so I do definitely want to talk about it. I really have spent the last couple of days playing around with all the raw photos, trying to figure out how I want to handle this type of artifacting, and I got a couple of general rules that I want to share with you. Keep in mind though, this is a very small sampling for me. It's not like I'm going to have every example of this type of artifacting that's going to happen but i think some of the general rules will be useful to you and definitely let me know if it helps you out in the comments below because i would love to know how other people handle it and also if any of my tips actually help you out so let's go ahead and take a look at this photograph right here one thing that i have noticed is that this type of artifacting really only shows up in low light photography at least it only does it for me so the thing that's going on right here is that when you're capturing photos in low light there's going to be a lot of noise in your photo and when you import it into Lightroom the sharpening the default sharpening in Lightroom is really causing this type of artifacting so the thing that I'm going to show you is how to actually adjust Lightroom sharpening in order to compensate so that you don't get this type of artifacting what I would recommend you do is you go to the detail panel in your Lightroom and what I would suggest here is you remove all the detailing so all the detailing straight to zero as you can see that already helps the artifacting and then what I would do is I would zoom all the way back out. I would select your alt key. And then what I would do is I would aggressively mask your photo so that you get only the sharpening that's important in your photography. So all of the hard lines, that's where you want all of your sharpening. So when you zoom all the way in, as you can see, a lot of the artifacting is gone. I'll go ahead and remove the masking. As you can see, when I remove the masking, some of it comes back and if I remove uh, the sharpness or if I put back in the sharpness detail again you can see the artifacting really show up but if I add both of them in there all of it almost disappears now you can still see a little bit of a residual um, artifacting but it's so minimal at this point that I am perfectly happy with that but if you are still unhappy with that what I would recommend next is actually to apply a little bit of noise reduction that's actually a little bit too much yeah, probably somewhere about there. So a little bit of noise reduction to really get rid of it if you want to again. So we started off here and then with a little bit of help, we definitely were able to clean this up and then you can get a nice smooth image. So those are kind of my general recommendations that I do for all of my night photography if I see this type of artifacting. Again, I have to zoom in really far in order to see this artifacting. So once you do the first two steps, I really don't think the noise reduction is super necessary. It's only if you want to be a perfectionist that you can apply there to really get rid of all of the noise reduction. But for me, I'm pretty happy with just the first two steps on most of my photography and I'll show you a couple examples of that right now. So right here, this is one of my edited photos that I've already put out online and I really like the photography and how it's edited. If I go ahead and I zoom in on this sign right here, you'll notice that the artifacting is pretty much gone, but I'll go ahead and I'll add back in the details and remove the masking and also the noise reduction. And what you see right here is that the wormy artifacts definitely are there, but again, it's very easy to get rid of. Once I actually remove the details, do the masking and apply a little bit of noise reduction, it really cleans up the photo really well. And I'm perfectly happy with the remaining artifacting that you can see a little bit right here. But overall, it cleans up the image super well and I'm really happy with the results of it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next photograph. So this one right here, this is another one that I really like. And as you can see, when I zoom in really far, you really don't see the artifacting. But if I go ahead and add back in the detail to 25, remove the masking, you can see the artifacting. And it's something that, you know, isn't very good looking, but once again, it was really super easy for me to clean up. Moving the details to zero does really help it out. So that's something that you definitely want to look at and do, and then heavily masking it. In this particular photo, I didn't even add any noise reduction because I really don't think it needs it. So I'm really happy with it just the way it is. So that's two quick examples of how I use my tips. So what I'm going to show you now is eight photographs that I have edited. Half the photo is going to have the steps that I just talked about, which is 
removing the details to zero, heavily masking, and apply a little bit of noise reduction. And the other half of the photo actually does not have that, so you actually see the warming artifacts. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you that while the warming artifacts is very annoying because you're going to be pixel peeping as you're editing your photos, in the overall image when you're looking at it after you're done editing everything else, it's still very difficult to see. Now, as a professional photographer, if you're getting paid for this, you definitely need to clean that up because you are getting paid and cleaning up this type of artifacting is definitely one of the steps you must do. But for people like me who's only posting these images out on the internet for reviews, it's really not that big of a deal because most people won't even pay up on it so definitely let me know what you think if you have a different approach to how you remove this type of artifacting please leave it in the comments below because i would love to learn from you because there's definitely more than one way to handle this type of situations it's just that for my purposes this seems to be quite universal so i can easily apply that and then move on with my other type of editing anyhow thank you so much for watching this is kind of the first in a series of q a videos that i want to do if you have any questions for me please leave it in the comments below and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gathering questions and every one to three questions depending on how long it takes to answer I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up into a five to six minute video and then I'm going to post it as a Q&A so definitely if you have any questions for me leave it below and I'll definitely start gathering them up thank you so much for watching I hope this video helped you out and I will see you in the next video